everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus, nice and clean. So good, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee. Today we'll be talking photo. You know, this channel is all about photo, video, as well as tech, but today is a photo day. We're talking about Fuji film. But before we get into it, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. You can pick up the prologue to this book right here, how to create a digital Fort Knox, backing up your digital life, as well as 10 tips of making tax sharp images. There's something there for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're an amateur, a pro-am, or a professional. You're going to glean something from that book also. Once again, jcristina.com forward slash books. Go pick them up. They're free. Very interesting information coming out of Fujifilm, or at least the rumor mill, I guess I should say. And it gives me pause to think maybe Fujifilm kind of messed up here a little bit. They are coming out with, of course, we've talked about this in the past, the Fujifilm X. H2, as well as now we're hearing once again, a X H two S. I told you about this about a couple of weeks ago or so. And I was really excited about this whole H two thing because I've been waiting on this for quite some time. I really want to see what they do with it. Are they going to make it unbelievably great? Because I always thought that the H one was fantastic personally. Anyways, the H two is going to come out in two different models. And it's going to be an H2 and an H2S. And supposedly the H2S will be the video-centric model. Now we know almost all cameras today are hybrid cameras. They do photo and video and they do both really well. And matter of fact, a lot of people actually judge the cameras today based on their video prowess, which is absolutely ridiculous if you are a photographer, but yet this is what ends up occurring. People are in the forums and they're all over the place. They're like, oh yeah, how is this new camera? Oh, it's really good. It does a great job. What is its video capabilities? And I think to myself, it's like, are you a photographer or videographer? Why would you care? And a lot of photographers do care because they want to make sure that their camera, the camera that they purchase is the bee's knees. They want it to be the cat's meow, the best thing on the market, period. So that means it has to do photo and video just in case one day they shoot video. It's kind of crazy, but that's just how it is. So the camera manufacturers know today that they have to put really good video into these cameras too. Now, as we always say, there's always some type of give and take. If you're going to have such capacity in a camera, any type of electronics, electronics get hot, period. End of story. I said this way back when the Canon EOS R5 came out and it was like, this looked amazing, 8K. It does all of this crazy bit rate. And I'm like, you know, this thing is gonna burn up. And that's exactly what ended up happening. Well, I guess Fujifilm doesn't want this to happen, but what's very strange is a lot of other companies have circumvented this heating problem or possibly a cooling problem by having active cooling put into the cameras themselves. So perfect example is like a Panasonic, the Panasonic GH6 or the Panasonic S1 series, the S1H for example, or FX3. Also, of course, you see the R5C, which is a R5, but a video centric version of the R5. It has onboard cooling, active cooling, and every single cinema Canon camera, the doesn't matter which one it is, the C100, the 200, the 300, the 500, the 700, all of those cameras have active cooling. And I've been a proponent of that since day one because I've used the C300s, 500s in the past for doing long form video. Why? Because you can run the damn thing for six, eight hours straight and not have to worry about it overheating. Why? It has an inlet, it has an exhaust, and it has a fan and they're blowing over the sensor and you don't end up with these heating issues. Well, all the manufacturers are seeing that this is a problem. And as we want more and more and more in these cameras, because they're, it's mandated today that they have the best video on earth, it doesn't matter if it's a video centric camera, they end up putting active cooling. Now what some of the camera companies are doing are putting active cooling in the cameras that are going to be video centric, that are going to lean towards video, like an FX3 on Sony's side, or for example, the Panasonic S1H, very video centric. And as I said before, the R5C, which is cinema, it is that bridge between an R5 and a C, hence R5C, 
right? Any of the C series, moving from an actual hybrid camera into a video centric camera, they all have some type of active cooling, but the active cooling is built into the unit itself. And the idea here with this Fujifilm X-H2S is it's almost like it was an afterthought. Like a, what the heck happened? Why is this thing melting? And I was reading some of the Fuji rumors and they were talking about this new unit and it was an external unit that goes onto the back of the camera. You flip the display to the side and you affix this fan system to the back of the camera. Well, it just, to me, doesn't make a whole hell of a lot of sense. It is the equivalent to one of those Tilta things that they came up with to try to prevent the R5 from overheating, right? Like this aftermarket thing. But why would Fujifilm create an aftermarket, almost aftermarket-esque product when they're building the damn thing from scratch? And one of the guys over at Fujifilm said, this is, you know, brilliant. This is fantastic. And it's like, no, it's an afterthought. They tried doing it and it just wouldn't work. They're probably going to give people 8K when it comes to the Fujifilm X-H2S. And with that 8K or maybe 422 at 150 meg and just some crazy bit rates that are going on, it's going to overheat. That's just it. Or you're going to have to really shorten the amount of record times. And they didn't want to do that. And I remember the guy at Fuji Rumors was saying that is brilliant. And I'm like, it's not brilliant. Once again, it's an afterthought. And who wants this big lug stuck onto the back? And another thing that he was saying was, well, maybe you just want to use the camera for photo and not video. Then why would Canon come up with an R5C that has active cooling and still an R5? The R5 is more of a photo camera at this point, And the R5C is a more video centric camera. Fujifilm saw that happen. That was a stumble, all right? That was a screw up on Canon's side, 100%. Why would Fuji screw it up by making this external cooling fan thing? Do it internally, make the camera slightly bigger. It just doesn't make sense because you're making two cameras to begin with anyways. So the X-H2 will be a photocentric camera or a hybrid and the X-H2S would be a video camera, a video centric version of that camera. One with active cooling, one without. The damn active cooling needs to be inside, not outside where you snap it on. It is absolutely ridiculous. It is an afterthought. The only way I can see it is they tried doing it and it just kept on overheating in, not the lab, but maybe outside. When you send these cameras out to be tested, from all of these select photographers, they're probably using them in a real world situation. They're outside, inside, in the humidity. Give one to me in Florida, see how long it lasts, right? It is hot as hell down here. So that's probably what ended up happening. It's not in the lab cool environment of 72 degrees, it's not. It's all over the place and it's probably overheating over and over and over and they're like, Shit, what are we gonna do? So they come up with this active cooling. Now, the only thing that they could do a little bit different here is since active cooling will be, let's call it an afterthought, but still a thought, because now they could make modifications in the internals of the camera itself and have this thing snap on and have those copper leads coming off a copper plate right behind that panel into this unit. Now, all of a sudden, you're actually going to get cooling happening in comparison to that afterthought that the folks over at Tilta did for the Canon EOS R5. That thing, it's just cooling the back of the plastic. I mean, does it work? Yes, but it's not going to take a lot of heat out. Whereas if Fuji actually designed the camera to have these leads coming out, let's say the bottom, that will probably actually work. But why guys, why? Now I have seen pictures of this unit on the back of cameras and it just looks ridiculous. Obviously that's not what it's going to look like. It's just a mock-up. Because if you held the camera up, let's say you'd be like buzzing the tip of your nose in the, it's just stupid, okay? It's gonna have a cover over, come on. I personally think that this is a screw up. I think it's an afterthought because they sent that out into the real world and they saw the thing overheating continuously and they're like, what are we gonna do? So. I think that this will work, it will cool the camera, and they will not have overheating issues because they're able to fix the internals of the camera to be able to use this external part, okay, this fan system. 
But I just think that this should have been done internal to the camera because there is two new cameras coming out simultaneously, right? Have one fat, one thin, one with active cooling, one without. End of story. That's my personal opinion. What is your opinion? What do you think? Why in the heck is so many cameras coming out with this active cooling stuff? Now we know, right? We're pushing the damn things to the wall, to their max, to the capacity that these things can do, and they simply just will overheat. We're wanting more and more and more. We went from 1080p to 4K to 8K. We went from 420 to 422. Now we want like 444 raw. It's like everything and anything we want. And the only way that they can give it is by sacrificing the camera and the internals. And heat will not dissipate if it's in a closed environment, period. You have to be able to have an inlet and an exhaust to be able to get that hot air out, period. End of story. Anyways, once again, what is your thoughts? I want to hear about it. If you enjoy this content, as always, please throw it a thumbs up. That'd be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have not as of yet. And click this little bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.